What's happening everybody? All right, so my thoughts on the Tesla Model S Plaid Edition. You know, it's 2021 and this car's introduction has been really the only vehicle that's been worth talking about, at least if you're into performance. Now, granted, there's some other releases that have been coming out that are pretty cool, but nothing quite captures the imagination like that Tesla Model S Plaid. And say what you will about Tesla in general, either the bland styling or the questionable build quality, at least of the interior. One thing's for sure, they set the standard for performance for an electric vehicle. But it's not just a standard for performance. The Tesla Model S Plaid is the standard for performance, literally quicker than every other production car made on the planet. Well, that's not called Navara, right? But that doesn't really matter because the Navara is $2.4 million and it's really not even part of the conversation at that point. But it doesn't matter because there's other two point whatever million dollar contraptions out there, the Plaid beats it. Zero to 60, Plaid. Quarter mile, basically it's all Plaid. And what do those numbers look like? Well, the Tesla Model S Plaid Edition, and we'll just call it Plaid moving forward because Tesla Model S Plaid just kind of wears my mouth out. That car will go zero to 60 in basically two seconds flat. It will accelerate literally at the coefficient of friction available from the tires. That is amazing. So in other words, it accelerates as hard as the tires will allow it to accelerate. But the zero to 60 has been a party trick for electric vehicles for a long time. Quarter mile numbers haven't been in stereotypically EVs would be really strong out of the gate. And then for, I don't know, maybe four or five seconds, you've got this rush of acceleration and then it lays over or it noses over and the fun really kind of stops after that. Not so much with the Tesla Plaid. That thing keeps accelerating to a top speed in the quarter mile, a terminal velocity of 150 plus miles per hour. Some guys at this stage of the game have gotten as much as 151 and 152. That is a number that is unheard of on its way to another unheard of number of a 9.2 second quarter mile time. It's a really hard number to back into without some perspective. That 9.2 number does put you in a little bit higher stratosphere let me explain to you why. I got to looking through some naturally aspirated record holding passes from Mustangs, Camaros, various Mopars, things like that. Uh, in a Mustang record, 970. In a Camaro record, somewhere also around 970. And what will end up being the Dodge record in a truck uh, somewhere in the nines as well. High nines, 970, 980 is what the real number is being gunned for. And notice that none of those are anywhere near 920. Now you might say 970, 920, what's the difference? I cannot put into words the complete and total annihilation that a 920 is to a 970 pass. It is bus lengths ahead of a 970 at these speeds. But these are naturally aspirated race cars, though, honestly. I mean, let's be real. The, a 970 in a Mustang is a stripped-down Mustang. It's got carbon fiber doors, hood, trunk. Uh, it's got everything is stripped out of the thing. It doesn't matter if it's the Mustang, the Camaro, the Dodge. It doesn't matter. It is a stripped-down version of that vehicle. So what about if you wanted to build something uh, a little bit more streetable, an honest-to-goodness street build, which is going to be, well, it's going to have forced induction. It's going to be boosted one way or another. Well, I go to the drag strip a lot. In fact, every Friday of my life, I'm at the drag strip, and I see all of these combinations running. Most of the boosted Mustangs that are a full house build, I mean, we're talking very high-end builds, 
are running somewhere in the 960s. The same goes for the Camaros as well. Dodges, depends on the level of tune for the Hellcat, which it normally will be, but you're looking at 960, 950 for those cars. You see in a trend here, most of those cars are basically mid nine second cars. That is to say that you can't build a Mustang, a Camaro, or a Dodge that is still legitimately street legal. In other words, it passes uh, an emissions test. I use that term loosely. I know what you're talking about. But you can't build one of those cars and have it still be honest to goodness streetable and still have it hang with a Tesla Model S Plaid. More to the point, to run those kind of numbers, you need specialized tires. Uh, drag radials won't really even get it done. We're talking about full-on DOT legal slicks. To get this done, the Model S Plaid just uses off-the-shelf street tires to get it done. But again, I want to focus on the difference here. The difference between a streetable build of, say, a Mustang at 960, and I mean an honest-to-goodness streetable build where you can drive the thing to you know, from LA to Maine, right? Is still going to be range limited. It's going to be running on E85. It's going to be difficult to find that fuel along your way on any journey, not to mention your actual range is going to be cut down by 30%. The point that I'm making here is that you can make more passes with a Tesla at the drag strip, the Model S Plaid, and just drive the thing home and fill her up in your garage, uh, and it doesn't matter what octane electricity you put in the thing. But I'll take it a step farther. See, the big difference is that 920 versus 960. It is still a huge difference between the Tesla and a very well-sorted-out, durable version of a strong-running street build, whether it's, again, a Dodge, a Camaro, or a Mustang. And you might say, to you, well, yeah, but the price is so different. Is it really? I put some math together here. This is if you wanted to build a Mustang. This is if you had the car, bought it in January, and then we're going to get rid of it in exactly one year. That's not that far-fetched, by the way. But hear me out. For one year worth of ownership, Tesla is going to cost you about $130,000 dollars. You figure that's going to be basically $2,300 a month if you finance it over 60 months. We're not worried about trade tax or anything like that. Just if you bought the thing, going to leave tax out of it, all the other stuff. Just going off of raw numbers. $130,000, grand, 60 months, say $2,300. Uh, at the end of the year, let's say the car depreciated $15,000. Um, you would be into this thing for basically... Uh, you know, at the end of the whole thing, $27,600 for one year. That would be your cost of ownership. And let's say at the end of the year, it's a lease or whatever it is, and you get rid of it or, or whatever the case is. That's what it would cost you. $27,600 for a car that you could drive off the lot that morning, go straight to the drag strip, run 15 or 20 times, come home, charge it. Go back to the drag strip, run as many times until you're bored sick of it, and bring it home and run 920s the entire time, or at least low nines. But let's talk about that Mustang for a minute. Let's say you find a Mustang, you buy it at $37,000 at 60 months, that's gonna be about 655 bucks a month. Comes out to about $7,860 a year, but you got mods that are included with that. And believe me when I tell you, if you think you're gonna get out of this or get into this club rather for less than 20 grand, you're off your meds. So you got 20 grand on top of your $7,860. And keep in mind, you're going to want to build this thing to where you can actually run it. And I'm not even talking about tires anymore at this point. I'm talking about just building it right to where it goes down the track. So you're into this thing now for $27,860 for that first year. Let's say everything included on this thing after the first year, you could sell the thing because keep in mind, you got $57,000 in this thing. Let's say you get $42,000 at the end of the year, which is about right. And weirdly enough, also $15,000, same as the Tesla, just kind of spitballing for depreciation. <laughs> that means that for that first year, your $27,860 
one year run with that Mustang versus $27,600 for the Tesla. You're into the Mustang for $260 more if we're just talking about doing this for one year. Also, you're going to be without that Mustang for about two months while everything's getting done to this car. You can amortize that if you want, but the point of the matter is, see how close those numbers are? And look, before you can say anything about, well, yeah, it's still less money, whatever, let me explain something to you. The number of guys that end up getting rid of built cars, like full kit build cars that are able to run 970s, 960s, or heck, even you know 1070s or 1030s, a lot of those guys, the minute that that car comes into their possession, one of two things happens. Either one, uh, they get sick of it, freaked out by it or whatever, and they get rid of it. The clock starts ticking, and I can tell you, it's probably going to hit the buzzer somewhere around the year marker. I know of very few guys with Hellcats that have actually kept them for more than a couple of years with multiple modifications, heavy modifications, especially when they switch fuel to E85. And oh, yeah, by the way, I forgot one little thing about this kind of financial breakdown here. You know that 20 grand I was talking about for mods? Well... Chances are, if you're going about this build, you, if you're doing a Mustang, chances are that's going on a credit card. I didn't take any interest into account for this. That is straight up cash money. So if you put that on a credit card, you can add your 20% to that. You're looking at another, I don't know, couple of grand in interest if you try to burn through that really quickly over that, uh, that first year. So that puts even further behind the eight ball, so to speak, compared to the plaid. Now, I know that's an improbable scenario, and I 100% own up to that, but it just goes to show you that you could go through all of that headache, all of that muss, all of that fuss, have a car that is still slower than a plaid, and you spent more money in the process. And again, statistically, you'll be getting rid of your built hot rod uh, probably within the first nine months to 14 months of having it in your possession anyway. And again, that's assuming that the thing holds together for long enough for you to get rid of it after a year or 12 or, or 14 or 16 months of ownership. So again, this is just a just an observation on my end. So one other thing I want to talk about with the Tesla Model S Plaid. You know, it's funny. A lot of guys say, well, the Tesla Model S, it's $130,000. It's so expensive. Well, I just showed you, is it really expensive? But here's the thing, the Tesla Model S Plaid is closer to free than it is to all of the other cars that it beats. It doesn't matter if it's 100,000, 200, 300, 500, 700, 1 million, 2 million, it doesn't matter. The Plaid beats all of them. It's a, it's a bargain by that standard. And if, the, again, the argument is, well, you know, built, not bought, and all this other stuff, and it's electric, and it does everything. Listen, if the internet has taught you anything, it's that the bottom line, the number, the gapple bees, right? The gapple sauce is what matters. You can't be a hypocrite here. You can't say, oh, well, it doesn't make the noise. It's not a real muscle car. It doesn't, whatever that your internal combustion engine does, but the only problem with that is your internal combustion engine is watching the taillights of this Model S Plaid get smaller and smaller and smaller as they drift further and further and further into the horizon. Come on, internet. Don't be a hypocrite and start trying to fall back on the past and heritage and tradition with internal combustion engines and sounds and rumbles and everything else. Again, I'm not buying the argument because the internet won't allow for a fun car to be fun. It won't allow for a fast car like the, the Plaid uh, to be compared to an internal combustion engine. Sorry, you don't get that luxury. The Plaid will wax whatever it is that you've built. And by the way, save the trailer queens. Because look, at this stage of the game, nobody's turned a Plaid into a full-on race car yet. But I can tell you this, even if they did, they could still drive the thing to the drag strip. You could strip that thing, put carbon fiber all over the place. 
you could build an eight second car out of the plaid and it would still not be undrivable. It would be as drivable as it is from the factory. Whereas all these other higher end builds have to be trailered to the drag strip because if they're not, you won't want to drive them to the track. You can't drive them to the track legally, but you know, that can be a little bit of an interpretation. I get that argument, but the fact of the matter is no matter what you have in your garage, the Plaid beats it. And so for me, I have to send a big thank you out to Tesla. In a way, they've taken some of the heat off of guys that just want to have a fun, fast car that they take to the drag strip. Everybody else that's out there trying to number chase, throw tons of money at engines and lightweight components and everything else, only to basically be running about as fast as a Plaid does. To us looking at it, it's like, well, yeah, you did all that work to your car. Still not as fast as a Plaid. Or, oh, it is faster than a Plaid? Well, what kind of gas mileage does it get? Oh, wait, you can't even drive it on the street? Oh, that's too bad. So you've basically got a go-kart then. Like if you can't drive it on the street and it's not street legal or you won't drive it on the street because you can't or won't, well, then it's an off-road vehicle. It might as well be a go-kart or a four-wheeler or pick something. It doesn't matter, but it's not a street car anymore. For me, again, it takes some of the weight off of my shoulders because no matter what, my car will never be as fast as the Plaid. And I don't get excited anymore if a car is faster than a Plaid. Because when you look at the car that's faster than a Plaid, it's a race car. So for me, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying watching the progress. I'm enjoying Tesla's success with this vehicle. Guys, I am a huge internal combustion fan. Don't get me wrong. I love my Hellcat. I'm not getting rid of my Hellcat. But the fact of the matter is that this is where the future is going, and it's fun to see the future begin its journey, its true journey, in a four-door sedan built right here in the States. So with that, I'm going to wrap this up. Post up your comments. Let me know what you think of that plaid. That's a wrap. Y'all have a great one. Adios.